technology has moved forward so much that we now have the tools we need to properly manage our society. We can we now work out which uh, governmental policies work and which don't, simply by, by, by crunching all that data. We can do that now in a way that we could never do that before. But the problem we've got is that for politicians, the truth often isn't very convenient. Uh, often a policy, and the idea of a policy will, will work really, really well. You know, it will float really well in certain parts of, of, of the population where they want to get those votes. And so actually, the truth isn't very useful to them. So what we need to do as members of society is put pressure on the powers that be to utilise these tools. Because if they don't utilise these tools, this ability we have now to crunch data will be used against us. Really. It will be used by corporations to target us with advertising and, and simply work more money out of us. So uh, it's something that we need to be aware of and it's something that we need to fight for. Uh, so I've written this poem. Uh, it's called Dr. Dobbs Data Doohickey. Club card, mate, he slurred. That's how they win. All pint of slosh, roomy eyes a-swim. A temple tap, his final caveat. And off he slouched to don his tinfoil hat. Alas, poor chap, his mind a well-scratched groove. So sure of something he could never prove, yet... At that very moment, far away, some boffin gave this barroom bore his day. That boffin, Dr. Della Deirdre Dobb, invented a doohickey, thingy bob, to take the stats and facts we blithely give and well do something practical with it. Before this great advancement in the field, the way we crunched our data didn't yield particularly intelligent results. Each arm of government talked to itself, but now, with Dr Dobbs' fantastic thing, you'd enter all the data and then, ding, cross-departmental patterns would emerge, fulfilling civil servants' central urge to do some good, to problem-solve, to fix, to stick together broken Britain's bits, central planning like you can't imagine. Why, Stalin would have wept into his napkin if he could have got his hands on this, and sure enough, the mandarins bump fists and tight reports that praise this Dr. Dob. Let's give this brilliant boff a well-paid job. And next came giant checks and wincing smiles, the type that one associates with piles. Then Dr. Dobb accrued a team of pros and set to fixing poor old Blighty's woes. Of course, the public struck a fever pitch and all across the land said things like this. Look at that. They're going to improve our lives. That's nice, dear. And Bake Off's on tonight. And sure enough, results came thick and fast. And Dr. Dobb gave ministers a tranche of excellent advice within a week. Which schemes to axe, which policies to tweak to save the public purse from being drained. At night she dreamed of being made a dame. And who could blame her? Dobb had not done bad, but never underestimate a spad. A spad, deaf, paunchy whip-smart worker bee, just down from Oxbridge. First in PPE, off seen on iPhones flanking politicians, the, the nutters on the night bus to perdition. And spads around the government's top guys expressed concern at Dr Dobbs' advice. For while our plan of action was expedient, politically it wasn't so convenient. For example, Dr Dobb discovered that cutting benefits from single mothers placed families under strain and then those kids would later likely need more benefits. So cut a corner now, pay double later. That wisdom nestled in the doctor's data. Beautiful, I'd say. Now all those numbers can teach us how to live lives less encumbered. But alas. That policy played well in leafy Middle England's dingley dell. So what if all the figures didn't stack? We've had our fill of experts and their facts. So Dr Dobb received dead-eyed applause and then her work was totally ignored. Why base your policies on solid proof when rhetoric's more useful than the truth? Deary, deary, dear. Poor Dr Dobb. No DBE, no grants and soon no job. No chance to fix Britannia's endless list of errors. Why, the public should be pissed off. This chance to gild our miserable existence, wrecked by MPs' ravenous self-interest. And sure, a few pens stiffly worded letters, but most thought data dry and telly better. 
A worse was still to come, for Dr. Dobbs' doohickey was, well, worth a fair few bob to companies who want to take out stats to better target us with endless ads and clever little nods to worm their way into our confidence and make us pay. So, back to our drunk, whose slurred smile grows. I told you so. I told you so. I told... But don't despair, my friends. This poem's fiction. You have the chance to scupper my predictions. To not take no, to fight, to make a fuss. Remember, politicians work for us. So take my tale and file as cautionary, because I don't buy that line about MPs, that politicians have to be the same, to, to, to lie, to compromise, to cheat the game. In this case, all that's needed is the honesty to follow facts, not ideology. Because buffs like Dr. Dobb will change our lives. Use stats and facts to depoliticize our miseries. To shelter us from greed with clear, unerring truth. That's what we need. Not dogma from Conservative or Labour, but wisdom nestled in the doctor's data. <laughs>